Hi everybody, happy Saturday and happy early Mother's Day to all the moms of the world. I'm doing a video to show you how to apply Savvy Minerals makeup. If you would seen my post last night on Facebook or Instagram, you would have seen that right now there's an awesome deal. Select Savvy Minerals products are 25% off currently now through May 17th. I believe the 17th is next Friday, so you have some time to kind of think about, peruse what's available on the deal and kind of build your new makeup bag. Um, I took a look last night and there's pretty much, there's a lot on there. You can choose your foundations, your eyeshadows, your blushes, uh, multitaskers, which are essentially just different ranges of colors that you can use. Um, as it says, multitask, you can use them on the brows, you can use them on eyeliner, uh, you can use them in some cases some bronzers, even though there are bronzers available. Um, there's also lipsticks and lip glosses. I switched all of my makeup last August to Savvy Minerals as last year was a big learning for me to learn about what currently was in my products, the harmful uh, ingredients that in case some of you may not know, the biggest surprise for me was the word fragrance on products and you will see that word everywhere from your cleaning products, probably your skincare products, makeup, shampoos, conditioners, lotions. It's everywhere, that word. And essentially what's for me the biggest surprise was that that word is an umbrella term used by companies to hide hundreds, maybe even thousands of harmful chemicals. And they can call it as like, um, you know, trade secrets or something like that. Um, I highly suggest you watch the video, uh, not video, the movie Stink. It's a documentary currently available to stream on Netflix. Also visit the ewg.org site. It's the environmental working group site. You can put in your brand name that you currently use today and it will give you a rating and it will show you what is in the product that gives it that rating, whether it's good or bad couple things before I get started to show you. Um, the lighting is in here bad. I'm hoping that you can still see the colors that I show you. Um, I'm hoping they come through a little bit. Um, I can't guarantee it. If you have any questions, please feel free to send me a message. I would love to help you get started with Savvy Minerals. Um, as I said, I've been using it since last August and I love it. Um, at first I was a little you know, intimidated with using mineral-based makeup since I've never used it before. I've been used to using, for example, cream foundations, you know, kind of smudge eyeliner sticks, things like that. So moving to just a powder-based makeup for me was, whoa. Um, second thing is that you're gonna see me popping in and out of the screen, and that's because my bathroom is super small. I don't know if you can really tell right now, but it's really, really small. I have no counter space, so when I'm applying my makeup, I have most of my makeup laid out on my toilet seat because that's the only really big enough space I have to put it all. So when I'm leaning out of the screen, it's because I'm getting the next item on my um, for my makeup. Anyways, okay. So I've already done um, my facial skincare routine that I do every day. I use Young Living's Art System. Um, sometimes I also use the Satin Facial Mint Scrub. I use that about two to three times a day to exfoliate um, my face. It's infused with pepper peppermint essential oil, which is really great to get your day started because it gives you a little tingle and it's also that really invigorating scent to help wake you up. Um, and then the rest of it, it's the toner, the light moisturizer. I also apply tea tree in certain spots on my face where maybe a little bit more troublesome, troublesome, excuse me, as well as I have a, what's called a DIY glow serum. And it's with lavender, copaiba, and frankincense, for, which are essential oils, which are known to help uh, give really great uh, skin supporting properties. Sorry, there's a notification, make that go away. All right, I've already, curled my eyelashes. So I'm just gonna get started with applying the, with the foundation. So I use kind of what I'm gonna start with. It's um, right here and all the foundations come in this. Hopefully you can see the color really well. This is cool number two. I have pretty light colored skin now as I've gotten older. I don't see the sun as much. So I start with a lighter base. Anyway, so I'm actually gonna use two foundation colors. So I'm gonna start with a cool number two. I'm just gonna grab my foundation brush. So this is part of actually the Savvy Minerals. They have a really great 
brush set that I invested, treated myself with uh, when I switched to Savvy Minerals last August. So this is the foundation brush. And then I also have the misting spray. And I also the actually the misting spray has lasted me quite some time. As I said, I use it every day. I use it to apply my foundation as well as my eyeliner. You can also use it to apply your eyeshadow, which is calling called foiling. I have not been brave enough yet to do that. I've been watching videos uh, to see how it's done. Um, I just haven't gotten there yet. So I still apply my eyeshadow dry but I would love to learn how to do the foiling because it's supposed to help with, um, give it a richer and darker look of the eyeshadow. It helps with all day coverage, which even when I apply dry, it's, it's still on there. It's not like it's fallen off or it's being wiped off during the day, but the misting spray is really awesome. I highly suggest also getting that. If you use water, there's no guarantee that's gonna stay on as well. So anyways, you'll see videos where people just spritz the brush. Um, which I started doing, but for me, I found that I prefer to actually put it on my hand first. So I just spray my hand once, kind of rub the brush around to get it wet, and then I do it again. So you want to spray your brush first to, to kind of help pick up, and I, I put the foundation here, cool number two, um, to help pick up the powder. And again, I'm actually going to be um, looking up in my mirror right above, so probably that doesn't look too weird. So it helps pick up and it helps to kind of apply to your face. So again, I apply cool number two kind of as my base foundation. Kind of helps with coverage of any blemishes I might have and if you're wondering why I haven't done a live video of this is because of this right here is it's, it's applying makeup and applying makeup live just seems a little more daunting to me than just going live to talk about anything else okay so you can see I just make sure I blend it in really well And that's it. That's cool number two. So I'm going to put this one away. I've got some on my hand, which is fine because, again, I don't have any counter space. So the next foundation I actually apply on top of it, and this one I actually apply dry um, because I already kind of have that base with the cool number two. It actually stays on pretty well. So this one is actually warm number two. Let me see it. So it has a little bit, I'm not really great with foundation, describing foundation colors, but I would say it probably has a little bit of more of a, a beigey tint to it versus um, the cool number two was much lighter. See here, hopefully you can see kind of a bit of the difference. So this one I just apply dry and it kind of helps give me more of a matte finish you notice I didn't need to actually wet my brush again because it's still a little bit damp. So it helps um, already to pick up the powder. And I don't actually put a lot on compared to what I had when I did cool number two. Again, this is warm number two. And I actually, I didn't think about combining foundation colors until I had actually watched a video similar to this and someone did the same. I think they actually had used cool number two and warm number one, which was my initial intent um, when I purchased the warm number two. Um, the last time I did a Savvy Minerals deal was for Cyber Monday last year and I just had number two in my head and I put warm number two in and I was like, well, I'll just try it, see how it does. And I've been happy with it. So not sure how well you can tell again because the lighting's so terrible in here, but you can see it gives me a little bit more coverage and more of a matte finish. So that's it for my foundation. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply my eyeshadow. So actually the first eyeshadow I got was, which I'll show you, it's kind of messy, is I got the eyeshadow palette which was released last June at convention. This is 
there you can see how which ones I use the most so really great it's the pressed powder here this is the very first eyeshadows that I was using because I actually didn't buy the kit there's a starter kit with um, Savvy Minerals but um, I wanted something to kind of give me a little bit more variety versus what was coming again, particularly with the eyeshadow and things like that so I kind of built my own on Savvy Minerals um, as I went on so yeah so I actually it's not like I stopped using the palette I do every once in a while because I do like the colors in here and I've blended all of the colors really well with each other but what I did for the Cyber Monday deal and for holiday they came out with these kind of eyeshadow gift sets I don't gift bundles um, I don't remember exactly what they called them but there were some colors that came together in it all together um, one of them was the best kept secret which is this kind of very neutral base and I actually use this as a primer again I learned that tip from another video I watched when I was trying to figure out how do I put on this eyeshadow and then the other colors that were involved or part of this gift bundle I would say was this really beautiful dark purple-ish color which is hopefully you can see there sorry it's kind of blurry this one's called Overboard. It's, as I said, it's a deep purple. It has a bit of a shimmer to it. And then um, also was this very kind of, kind of goldish shimmery. It has a bit of like the purple lavender tint to it. it has a bit of more silver in it. So I actually, you'll see, I'll use this. I use those, those three I use primarily every day for my look. And then this last one, which you'll really see is this um, what's called Wonderlust. Sorry, the other one before was called Inspired. This is called Wonderlust. And so it's definitely, oops, spilled a little bit there. It's more of a cream shimmer. Um, I use that when I use, which I purchased this separately because I just, I thought it was pretty. I want to try it. It's called Freedom. It's this green shimmer color. And so um, I use that every once in a while. And when I do use the Freedom as my kind of statement color, I use the Wonderlust to kind of help blend and lighten it a little bit. Um, okay. So those are my eyeshadow colors. I start, as I mentioned, I start with Best Kept Secret, which is a matte, so there's no shimmer in this one. And as I said, I I learned in a video that it was suggested to start with this as a primer. So this is not a Savvy Minerals brush that I use, but I like it because it has, it's a very bushy type brush, so it like helps me kind of cover my entire eyelid. Again, that's the color of Best Kept Secret. I have applied this, oops, color by itself. I'm just tapping the brush to kind of get any loose. I have applied this like when I do a more neutral look, um, which I don't do often, but when I'm like super lazy, but I want to look like a little bit of color and alive, then I'll, this is the eyeshadow I'll put on and just leave it at that. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see the difference of it as much as I can, like looking in my mirror on the video. But you can see between this is the eye I just applied Best Kept Secret versus this one's nothing. So you can see it's a little bit more matte, smoother. And I just kind of apply it across my entire lid. A little bit underneath as well. Just to kind of prime everything. Do the next lid. Again, I think I already mentioned there is a starter kit. There are four starter kits um, offered to purchase um, with Savvy Minerals, kind of the foundation to get you started. Um, there's four available depending on, based upon the foundation color. So there's one with Cool Number Two Foundation, Best Kept Secret here. Um, I believe there's also I'm talking and I'm not sure if you can even hear me with the cool number two kit it's the best kept secret the cool number two foundation I think it's the smashing blush and then the abundant um, lip gloss which I'll show a little bit later 
and it also comes with, um, I believe it's a 5 ml bottle of lavender essential oil. Again, lavender essential oil is really great um, to apply to your skin, uh, which was a learning to me because most people know lavender as being really super relaxing and calming and to help with sleep, which yes, I do use it for that, but it also has skin supporting properties, um, which that's why actually I think I believe the misting spray is actually also infused with lavender essential oil. Can double check here. It has a bunch of size like rose and geranium, geranium, a lot of essential oils have really great skin supporting properties. Anyways, so I think the other foundations is like warm number two, maybe warm number one, and there's a couple of dark foundations available. So again, there's four. So okay, now next I'm going to apply the overboard. So this is again, this is the dark purple. And I just kind of tap it into the lid. So then I, again, I applied this dry because I have not been brave enough, even though I've watched a couple of videos of how to do foiling, which essentially what you would do is you would wet the tip of your eyeshadow brush and kind of very similar to how I, you know, grabbed it with my foundation and apply. Um, sometimes when I apply dry, it sometimes gets I'm not really great about it, so it gets a little messy. So I haven't tried the wet because I don't know if I do something, how I would actually fix it, which I'm just getting more comfortable with applying it. So one of these days I will, I will test it and maybe I'll do another video showing that. Okay, so I applied the overboard you can see on here. So I'm gonna lightly brush it across my eyelid here and you'll see it kind of just blend it back and forth with the dry and this is where the difference with applying dry versus uh, using the foiling technique is that with the dry you may not get as much of the dark color saturation coming through which apparently foiling will help with that because it does come on um, darker because it helps that. So I will say applying the best kept secret really helps too before with um, giving you a little bit more color there. Again, hopefully you can see the difference. So this is where overboard I've applied it. Obviously nothing there. So applied in the next eye. And for some reason, I have an easier time applying eyeshadow to my left eye than I do to my right eye. Does anyone else have notice anything like that? I don't know what it is. I don't know if maybe it's just the way this my skin is on that side of my face. Maybe I'm just weird. Who knows? But I don't know. I feel like it just kind of goes on a little bit easier and more evenly on my left side than my right side. Again, if I was probably doing the foiling technique, I probably wouldn't have to do so many reapplications because I said it goes on wet and it goes on dark. I've seen other people do it. I just haven't been brave enough to test it. I just need to do it one of these weekends so I can kind of get used to it versus trying to do it during the day as I'm getting ready to go to work. So I try to get, you know, the color as evenly as possible. I'm sure you've all enjoyed me watching me from a bottom up type view with my mouth open. Everyone does that, right? Okay, I'm gonna just apply a little bit more here. Again, probably with the foiling, I probably would not have as many, cause if you can see, there's kind of like streaks where it's dark, some areas where it's not, which I haven't been. I'm not, definitely not, obviously, as you can tell, I'm not a makeup artist. So um, you're going to have some fallout from it, which is totally fine. I'll show you how you can clean that up later. Like right here, you can see I have the fallout from, and that's this area on my right eye is always, for some reason, a dark spot. I don't know how actually someone asked me, my dentist asked me, he's like, oh, did something happen to your eye? 
It's like, no, for some reason, that spot just collects eyeshadow darker than any other spot. Um, you don't want to wipe the fallout with your, um, like your fingers, for example. You'll notice I'm not doing that right now because if you do, then you're going to smear it and it's going to actually be on your skin, like eyeshadow on my eye. Um, so I'm just going to kind of wipe my brush a little bit in the excess of the overboard. And now what I do is I'm going to apply the lighter kind of coppery, lavendery, I don't even know what you call this color. It's called Inspired, but how to explain it. So it has that silver shimmer. I really like it. I probably, I haven't tried just applying this by itself, like for a neutral look. Maybe I would try to that, like after maybe do a best kept secret, maybe just apply this just for a little bit of shimmer. I think this would really look great. So I have, um, she's almost 15, she turns 15 in July, I have a niece. And she's just starting to get into makeup, which is kind of crazy to think about. But I like envision I'm like for someone who's just starting to get into makeup or a young girl, young teenager, I think this would be a really great color for them to start out with because it's not, you know, just enough color and shimmer there. And, um, you know, still looks appropriate for the age. So, okay, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to apply pretty much the rest of my brow. Um, sorry, my brow, my eyelid up to my brow. Um, and it does do a little shimmer. It also helps kind of to blend where overboard ended. And then you'll see later I'll kind of blend it all together. Let me try that from here so you guys don't keep seeing my... I'll just say that it feels weird applying makeup just on my phone. I'm not very talented in that sense. Okay, so I just kind of apply it all over. It kind of helps, as I said, kind of the sharper, like, ending edge of the overboard. And then it brings a little bit more shimmer at the top. Okay, yeah? I guess that looks fine. Um, probably looks like crazy hot mess right now, but that's why we have a blending brush, which I'm going to get to right now. Okay, so that was the eyeshadow. That's kept secret, overboard, and then inspired on the top. Okay, so this little brush comes in the brush set and it's amazing. It's um, really kind of like, I don't know what you call that, very fluffy, I guess, but it's really to help one to get rid of all the fall off and then help blend the eyeshadow all together. So what I first do is I just kind of go across my eye where I had the fallout. Surprising I had more on my left side than my right side. It's usually the opposite. And then I just kind of blend in the inner part because for some reason I'm not really great with that part of my eye. And there, I just kind of blend it all together. And that's my eyeshadow look. Again, one of these days I will learn how to do a, like a smoky, professional looking eye. I'm sure the whole foiling bit will help with that. I actually just watched the video that um, someone did of the foiling. I was like, oh my God, it looks super awesome. I just haven't gotten there yet. So the next piece, and this is probably the part that takes me the longest, and that's not when I'm doing a video, is the eyeshadow or the eyeliner. So um, I always, I'm used to using like kind of like the pencil eyeliner, but it was more like a kind of like a smudge stick. So it would go on super easy, you know, no smudging, even though that's kind of the consistency of the pencil. And it was really quick. So I always stayed away from wet eyeliners because I just wasn't very good about applying it or I didn't have time to really learn. So I kind of had to learn how to do that with the eyeliner because it's obviously it's minerals, it's powder. You can apply it dry, which I just saw a video with doing a smoky eye, which she applied it dry first followed with wet. Um, so maybe that will be my next step with learning how to foil my eyeshadow is doing that combo. Um, I haven't gotten the dry part opposite. I haven't done the dry part. I've done the wet eyeliner and the wet took me some time to get used to because again, I was not used to using a wet eyeliner. So, okay. Oh, that's great. I just dropped my eyeliner brush. So, um, this is the eyeliner jet set or jet setter. So it's pretty much coal black. 
and it's powder. Um, and then this brush was not available in the eyeshadow or the brush set. I bought it separately, but you'll see it has on one end, let's see over here, it's a very angle tight brush, which I think this is the end you would use if you did dry. I have tried to wet and it just didn't do very well for me. So again, I'm not a professional here. And then you have a very, the very tip of it is the, like what you're used to seeing on, like kind of when you use liquid eyeliner or those package ones. Um, that's a very fine end there. And this is the end I use to apply the eyeliner. So this will be the true test with doing a video. Okay. So again, people show videos of spraying their brush. What I do, and this is probably one of the best tips and I'm, I'm learning with the foiling bit too, is the back of your hand is your best friend when applying mineral makeup. So I actually, with this, I apply once onto the back of my hand. So you can see it's glistening. I take the fine end of the brush and I kind of get it wet that way. And then I dip it into the powder. So you can see it's all here on the end. And then I brush it kind of along where it's wet on my hand. I try not to get it too wet because then it goes on super watery and then it takes longer to dry. And plus like it doesn't come on as dark. So I found a section on my hand where it wasn't too wet but it was just wet enough. So you can see there. So just using my brush, I've been doing that. So brush, brush, brush on the lens here and just, that was attractive, wasn't it? And then of course, apply. And ironically, I do the eyeliner on my left eye first versus my right eye, which was the opposite if you noticed or remember how I did the eyeshadow. What I do find with applying this eyeliner this way is it is pretty super forgiving. So if I, there's a spot, which I actually just did, I kind of like, it kind of got caught or something and it kind of like went outside the line I was drawing. Um, you know, I was able to kind of go back over it. You can apply it as dark, like a dark black, or as light, so it kind of comes off as like a lighter slate color or gray. Well, not really gray, but maybe like a charcoal color, charcoal gray color, other gray. For those in retail, like me, and you talk about the color of clothes all the time. Okay. So that's my left eye here. So again, I'm not super fancy with the eyeliner. I just kind of go over what the line and then I'll do a, kind of a little wing on the end there. Sometimes I have to get a little bit more depending on how much I put on the first time. And I bought, you know, some people are worried about like on your skin. Surprisingly, I need more missing part. I don't usually have to spray twice, but I don't think I got it in a good spot and now the rest of it kind of dried. Some people are afraid of like, you know, I'm putting it on your hand, you're wasting the makeup, but I, I bought this and started using it, I think last July or August. There were some things that I started using a little bit earlier. Um, then August and, and this is the same container that I bought so I mean eyeliner you don't use that much of but some people feel like there's a wet spot on my some people are like oh well, you're wasting all that makeup but you're just putting a little bit on and you're just kind of smearing it in a sense to get the color you know. I would love to learn how to be more even with applying my eyeliner, I would say. I'm not really great about that. 
like my wing effect on my right eye is always a little bit thicker than on my left eye. But hopefully no one's really looking too closely and judging me for that. I try to get it as close as possible. But oops, my hair got in the way there. <laughs> okay. And sometimes in this next piece, sometimes I remember to do this, sometimes I don't. But if you don't, it's fine. So what I do next is then I just kind of go over along the lash line on my bottom lid just to kind of give my eye a little bit more pop. I don't go all the way across, I go to maybe three quarters away. And there. So then, really quickly I just kind of wash my hand. I have the black stuff and want to make sure that I don't get it anywhere else. great to have a black smudge somewhere by accident, right? Okay, so that's my eye with the eyeliner. Hopefully you can see it. Again, I know this uh, light in here is terrible. All right, next is the Savvy Minerals Natural Mascara. I've seen some people that absolutely love it. Some people are like, I don't. Um, it's a very different brush. You can see here it's a lot different than probably what you would see. So what I learned with this, because a lot of people were like, when you get started, you want to like brush it across the top to get all the excess off, which yes, it helped a little bit, but it just kind of, in my case, it would just kind of move it across a, a different ridge line. And then if I accidentally turned it, then I'd get that glop on my eyelashes. What I learned to do, which I haven't done, had to do so far probably in the last month or so is because I've done so much when I first got this is I get a paper towel and you want to make sure whatever you use if even if it's a paper towel that you don't use the really like really soft fluffy kind of like has extra kind of like this is why I don't use a tissue because it just if you use a tissue you'd get the tissue fibers all over the brush um, I use a bounty uh, selecticides. I just use the plain white. That's the type of paper towels I use and I like them. And I would just kind of take it and just all across the thing. You might think, oh my gosh, I'm wasting all that mascara, but you're actually not because there's still a bunch in the tube. And as I said, I haven't had to wipe it off for over a month. And so now when I put it in and I still get enough mascara on my eyelashes. So as you'll see here. The other trick with using the um, I just put it on. I apologize. I don't have super long thick lashes. But the other trick is that you want to kind of start at the bottom and you kind of slowly go back and forth that way instead of just straight up. That's another way to kind of prevent it. Uh, the smudging and making sure you have the coverage. I used to do eyelash extensions. And not just the ones you buy at the drugstore and glue on. I used to do the full on glue the extension on every lash, which gives you an awesome effect. And I loved it because I didn't have to worry about mascara or eyeliner in most cases. Even if I wasn't wearing any makeup, if I put just some lip gloss or lip color on, people would think I had makeup on. So there you go. The problem with that, it, I mean, it's quite expensive, one. And two, there's a lot of maintenance with it. And then I managed to get it to last for a, for at least a month. I was like, I paid this amount of money. I am going to have these extensions for a month. For me, though, with having kind of, you know, very thin, sparse lashes is that they were really hard on my eyelashes. There's one point, probably the last time I did them, I went a full year year round every month I went in and got the eyelash extensions and which is great I loved it but when they when I did eventually 
walk away from doing that and that was before I actually was introduced to Young Living and Savvy Minerals and all that. It was really hard on my lashes. <clears throat> They were actually even shorter and even thinner and actually this eye, which you can't really tell, but I, the last year using the lash serum and obviously not doing lash extensions has helped. Um, I have a section that actually there's missing eyelashes because of that. So yeah, there you go. Hopefully, I don't know if you can see them, but my eyelashes. And then lastly, well, not last night, I'm going to put a little color blush. So this one, actually, I bought this one first. I bought this last February because I thought I was running out of my old blush, which it seemed like it took a little bit longer to run out of that than I thought. Um, this is called, I do believe you're blushing. It's this nice kind of rosy, shimmery look. I really like it. It really, I feel like it really kind of brings life to my cheeks, even in bad lighting. So you just put it in your cup or the lid, tap a couple times. And that's the blush. So again, I do believe you're blushing. They have a range of blushes. Um, I don't think you could go wrong choosing a blush. It goes on super easy. And you can see I have a little bit more rosiness in my cheeks now because of it. Okay. Last is lip color. So kind of similar with my eyeshadow, depending on what I use. I mostly, this is the eyeshadow combo that I use most often every day. Um, but as I mentioned, sometimes I'll change it up and use the Freedom, which is the green. Or in the eyeshadow palette, there was the Deep Charcoal that you can do a really great smoky eye with. Um, there's a Rose Pink that I've done before too. And it really depends on mostly what I'm color. I kind of like, you know, what's a color that I want to pop more that I have an eyeshadow for that um, really kind of determines. But this is usually my go-to look here. And I guess I am wearing a purple t-shirt. So, I have three lip glosses. I only have two lip colors. So, the two lip colors I have is, um, this is Mic Drop. I actually got this for free in February, which was a surprise. It's a really bright pink color. It actually, it goes on as a bright pink, but it's a bright light pink. I thought this actually would come on a little bit darker when I first applied it. And so, um, and I've always been a girl to apply a lip color, lipstick color, and then apply um, a lip gloss on top because I like to have that shimmer and shine in my lips. So that's Mic Drop. Um, I'm probably gonna wear that today given the purple that I have on. It's a nice kind of pop statement color. And then this is actually, this was part of the sentiment line they launched in um, June last year during convention. This is Untamed. So this kind of has a little bit more of a berry, kind of a deep berry, I guess you would say. Not totally super bright berry though. So what I do with this, if I do wear Untamed, here I'll put it on my, I'll put both colors on my hand so you can see. So Untamed is on the bottom versus mic drop on the top, which you can obviously, very two very different colors that I wear. Um, when I wear mic drop, what I do is I apply Rockin', which this was, I believe, a lip uh, gloss color. Let me put this right on top of, um, a lip gloss color that was released with the Holiday Collection a couple of years ago. They just, I think, sold out of the Holiday Collection. But they did um, bring back Rockin' last holiday season to purchase individually, which was great because I love the look. Sometimes I just wear Rockin' by itself. So this is Rockin', the lip, lip gloss right there. So um, I apply it on top of the Mic Drop. So the Mic Drop is kind of like a foundational lip color that I put and then I put rockin' on top so it deepens the color pink, gives it the shine. Um, when I apply Untamed, I use two, two lip gloss colors which I'm going to apply right here. So this first one is Abundant 
it's a really great neutral pink color it does not come on this pink like it's it's still very neutral like if I put it right now it would still have the color of my lips it probably make it a little bit pinker um, but it gives it a really great shine and then the other color I will sometimes apply on top of um, untamed which I got for free at a class my friend Kate uh, she was hosting a class and I got that so what's really great about either of these two lip glosses that I'll apply on top of Untamed is that it brings out certain pigments within Untamed very differently. So again, that's Untamed. And then this lighter color here, that's Abundant, the lip gloss. And then this uh, more brick red color is, that one I didn't tell you, that color is called Anchors Away. So what happens when I apply Abundant versus Anchors Away on top of Untamed is the Abundant will bring a little bit more of the pink out of here. So it kind of like softens it a little bit. And then Anchors Away will bring out more of the reddish tint of Untamed. And so it kind of makes it a little bit more bright, um, stronger, bold. Not like red, red, but you know, a deeper reddish color. So most likely today I'm going to go with the mic drop and rockin and you'll see here as I put it on how like light it first looks on me which is not technically a pink color I would normally put so look very bright right you're like oh my god and then rockin which has a little bit more deeper fuchsia color So that's rocking. So kind of together brings out more of the pink and shine. And yeah, so that's, that's it. This is my Savvy Minerals look um, that I do daily. Again, I kind of, I've learned to have fun with the colors, um, particularly like the um, eyeshadow colors. I was always a person I loved, always loved the different lipstick colors and lip glosses. I, I always had tons of them, but the eyeshadow colors I've definitely been playing around more with. Um, I hope you found this super helpful. If you have any questions, again, please send me a message. I would love to help you get started with making the switch from your current makeup line to um, non-toxic mineral based savvy minerals again it's been really great i've had fun applying with it i probably have never had as much fun applying makeup than i have with using savvy minerals again there's also a great deal 25 percent off select savvy minerals items and it's good through may 17th and it's across pretty much everything that you would like to get started um hope you have a wonderful saturday and take care bye